the, the, the scriptures to, to get your, 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 your bills paid and so forth, you will still be a child of God, but to be as effective as you ought to be, to maintain yourself in the prophetic, forget it. Forget it. I'm not saying here because you as a prophet sanctifying yourself means that you'll make no mistakes. No. If you have fallen, pick yourself up. If you have done something wrong, pull yourself back. We must become the gospel we preach. We need to live in a certain life. There was a, a vicious gentleman who many years ago, I think a year or two ago, launched an attack from nowhere on us. This man made um, uh, allegations on us. And because he presented himself as a journalist or whatever, it was difficult to really uh, say he was not true. He spoke things as if somebody had evidence. In fact, nobody can say what this guy had been saying without having evidence. You know, to a certain extent, when they say, uh, this man of God does this, this man of God, you know, and he was talking about Hallelujah Ministries and specifically me. I don't know who paid him. His spiritual life cannot be compared to mine. His level of dedication to God is insignificant compared to mine. His uh, level of uh, integrity and honesty cannot come closer to mine. But while he, 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 he made allegations on television, on newspapers, on radio, he said he was a journalist. So he went all out. At first I say, let's neglect that. You should not pay attention to it. To the point where it was now, uh, your silence was confirming it. We had to confront it. And the only way we could confront it was to allow the legal team to confront it. Because this man is applauded. If somebody comes to you and says that uh, Pastor Aflokau is divorcing, Pastor Aflokau has uh, a child out of wedlock. Pastor Aflokau uh, is a drunkard man. I have pictures of him or I saw him. He drinks in this place. But such stories people love because I'm a mystery. My life is a mystery. How do you do what I do? Pastor Aflokau, uh, the miracles are not miracles. He pays people. Those are the story. Even those who knew you for many years, they go, Oh, yeah, could it be? <laughs> You're being informed by somebody who has never even been uh, two meter close to your spiritual father. You have known him. You have heard from him for all this long. And you fall in the trap of the enemy. Knowing scripturally that the enemy is a liar. And the lying is uh, one of his schemes. This man spoke about things as if one had evidence. And now, we, we had to take him to, um, to confront that. And the only way we could do it, he has a big mouth. The only way we could do it was to ask the legal team to ask the, the you know, justice to, um, uh, to confront that. Pastor Af as a child... Uh, whose name is so and so giving evidence on things that has no head ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters shocking lies you see some people lie you can see that uh, it just threw something no consistent lies he has been called in court and uh, i'm not part of it really part of not part of it i just permitted the lawyers to make sure that uh, we confront this they confronted it. Nothing is true. He said he had evidence far like this of all the posts on Facebook, on social media, you know, in any... Sir, please show us evidence on anything. There is no evidence. So why did you do that? At the end, we had an apology that he had to present to the judge. And in the apology, he confirms that I have done it 
with a malicious heart to cause harm. But now you, you give an, uh, an apology like that. But you paint this man to be all kind of things. Of course, it does not impact me. I have proven God in the highest level in my generation. If somebody still fails to believe God in me, I'm not shocked. Jesus Christ was not completely believed. It directly falls on that. The evidence of what I do with God is high. And I don't have two lives. I have one life sanctified. My tongue has never tasted alcohol. I have never, not even a sip. I do not know how it tastes. Does it make me holier than thou? No. Am I using it to boast? No. But I'm here to say, to a certain degree, even with our shortfalls, if you want to maintain yourself in the spiritual realm and you want to be a man or a woman who is effective in the prophetic, there must be some level of sanctification. Oh, well, Pastor Alf drives a Rolls Royce. You didn't buy me that Rolls Royce. I bought it myself. And I did not use your offering. I work with my own hands. Oh, well, Pastor Alf has a Bentley. Yes, so what? Being poor does not bring you to applaud me. Having chicken in my fridge should not be a stumbling block to you. I'm saying now this to bring balance. Did you see his watch? Do you know where I got it? Maybe somebody gave it to me. Sanctification doesn't mean that uh, you start living like a nun. Oh, well, I respect nun. You start living, let me use it an example. You start living uh, a life that is literally... Uh, you know, in the corner of the, you, you walk from the other corner of the street by, no, no, that's not sanctification. No, I'm separating myself. No, it's just a life consecrated to God. You are honest. If I happen to make a mistake, I'll fix it. And me making a mistake will not mean that I am a mistake. My spiritual father, Jacques Andre Vernon, said, if you fall, pick up, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and carry on. That was the biggest advice I got from him when I was leaving my country. When I was leaving to where God set me. He said we are all walking in the desert. And that we are all dressed in white. And he said we are walking one behind another as if it was a queue. And he looked to me and said that if it ever happened that you have fallen, don't stay there. Pick yourself up. Dust yourself off and move on. Do you think that if it ever happened that I have made a mistake, to God, my life will be like the life of those, those other ones, or God will forget every labor of love I've made because I made a mistake? Never. Never. But yet... I need to live a life of sanctification so I may set myself and remain in the spirit. I have spoken a lot today. I believe that uh, it, it was important on Monday we will begin to speak in a different level. So I, I, have, I had to close this today. How to maintain yourself in uh, the prophetic. One, grow in the knowledge of the word of God. Two, Keep sharpening your belief in the supernatural. Three, die to yourself. Four, maintain uh, sorry. Uh, three, obey God. Obey God. Live in obedience. Four, maintain uh, uh, die to yourself. Four, Die to yourself. Five, maintain yourself in the presence of God through prayer, through fasting, speaking in tongue, and so forth. And uh, uh, lastly, you have to sanctify yourself and live a life of consecration. It is always with great joy that I seize a moment sharing the word of God with you. Love the word of God. It will build you. It will position you.
What you know will empower you. What you do not know will kill you. My name is Aflo Kao, and it is always a great joy to serve God in serving you. Until we meet again tonight at 10, um, from 10 to, to 11, I want you to stay strong, stay in grace. Tomorrow Sunday, I'll be here for the first, second, and third service. Together, we'll enjoy the presence of God, and God will keep glorifying His name. I love you, and I pray the blessings of God upon you. Shalom.